Welcome players to Triple Play Fantasy Basketball Mini Tapes with Coach James Lewis. That's me representing Maryland and Coach Kevin Coleman representing California. Kevin, how are you doing this Sunday morning? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited here to talk about a little basketball with a fellow coach and we're getting some topics that we want to kind of discuss from the last week. Absolutely. So this is Trip Play Coach's Corner. In this episode, we're going to talk a little LeBron James, Kyrie Irving beef. Coach Kev, what do you make of the beef between him and LeBron? Yeah, man, I was laughing at this. I saw some article the other day that said, no hugs or daps. What's going on with Kyrie and LeBron? And I'm just like, man, I don't know. You know, when I, I, I like both these guys. I've grown up watching these guys. You know, and Kyrie went to Duke. I'm a big Duke fan, so I've, I, I've, I've appreciated him. Uh, but they got there. I think there is real. I think it is real. I think that they do have some legitimate beef. I know when Kyrie played with LeBron, I know there's been reports that he always came out and he felt like he was a little brother. And LeBron has that. He he does that. He does that weird thing where he like tries to push blame on the other people and say, well, I don't know why he doesn't like me. And you know what? Like LeBron's crew and the things that he does with those guys and all the everybody around him, they can really push that on the younger players. And Kyrie was young and he probably feels a little jaded. Um, but I think it's a real beef. What do you think? I I, I don't think I would say uh, I, would, I don't think I'd use the word beef. Okay. I think there's, there's a little bad blood. There's a little like there's a little tension right now and um you kind of mentioned it but i i think they're i think they're brothers here this big bro and little bro and brothers go through up and downs right and mm -hmm. then sometimes when i got an older brother and sometimes when he 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 stepped over the line we might not talk a couple days right it, it just kind of takes its toll when um they rub you the wrong way but i mean let's go let's go back in time they, they had the greatest experience memory of winning that 2016 championship together they needed each other to beat the greatest regular season of all time and that 73 win yeah. warrior team and that that'll ne that'll never go away right that they'll, they'll always they'll always have that together and they'll, they'll sit down and, and they'll break bread and they'll eat and they'll they'll get they'll get back together but yeah no dats right now no fist pounds maybe some avoidance is definitely going to take its toll after uh kind of Kyrie shenanigans so yeah they win the championship they're they're on the high that's like their their honeymoon but then you know, Kyrie wanted to be the big man on campus. He requested a trade to another team. It was the Celtics, and admittedly, it was harder than he thought. And later, gave LeBron credit for how he handled things as a leader. Went to him for advice. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. When you hear what he said on the, did you hear what he said on the Kevin Durant podcast where he said, "Man, for the first time in my career, I can look down and that mother effort can make a shot too." That's a pretty – like, these guys take that stuff seriously. These guys, like LeBron, he tries to pretend like he's not emo he's not like emotional guy and he doesn't try to get too hot and bothered. But things like that get under your skin, right? We played. I played. And I know, like, if someone kind of comments on my game – and I, let's face it, LeBron's really not clutch. Like, we know that. LeBron, yeah, he, he's hit No, out. we don't. No, we don't. He <laughs> is clutch. <laughs> What, is, what is, is his premier shot making? I'm talking about shots, right? So I, I think that okay. he does other things in the game. But Kyrie's statement's not that far apart. We never, we we always, he always gets that thing. Oh, he makes the best basketball play. We hear that all the time. Which, as a coach, I get he does make the best basketball play. But I want my best player taking that shot, not James Jones in the corner. Yeah, well, I think that was a part of him empowering uh, Kyrie, and you know, it, saying you're the best option late. Right. And, 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 and hey, they won a championship for it. But LeBron is clutch. He has five game winners in the playoffs. No one has ever done that. Right. No one has more than I think, I think three at the buzzer. And this is like in huge situations, whether it's, you know, first round against the Wizards, whether it's on Jimmy Butler, whether it's in the NBA or in the Eastern Conference finals against Orlando, like he has hit huge shots. And I think that's one of the most overrated uh, like down plays of LeBron James's game. You can go to free throw shooting. You can go, which Kyrie funny, uh, like laughily yeah. uh -huh. poked, poked a little, little fun. This is, this is your best free throw shooter. And, and Kyrie can say that he's 17th all time in free throw percentage at 88%. Um, but I, I really honestly think that the, the whole LeBron isn't clutch thing is super overrated. And I mean, look at the, this season game, Number one, but I, outside of that, who's hitting more big shots than LeBron James? Yeah, he passed the Caruso last night, but like, let's not f act like in last week and all those overtime games, he was not hitting step back after step back after step back, putting teams away. 
Okay, well that's okay. That's fair. But what I will say is, he did it even last year in the finals when he passed to Danny Green. Yeah, I know Danny Green was wide open, but I want LeBron taking that shot. I don't care if you got two guys on him. MJ is not making that pass, and if MJ, MJ does make that pass, which he did to MJ Curry, would have made that. It was triple teamed at the rim. He that I don't care, man. Open, and Danny Green was butt naked, wide open. Yeah, well, like, you got to know who Danny Green is because Danny Green was never making that shot. He's he, that that shot was going booty no matter what because Danny Green doesn't have that thing. But what I would say is this: you tell me then, who are your top five clutch guys right now in the league that you trust making a game winning shot in the playoffs? We're not talking about LeBron regular season. LeBron regular season, with LeBron playoffs are kind of two different beasts um, because I think he's actually more clutch in the regular season. Who are your five then, or who would you put it? Would you who would you put ahead of LeBron? I well, I I I, I, don't know. I think I disagree with that point too. I think I I mentioned the five game winners in the playoffs. I think that he's he is clutch in the playoffs. Uh, but as far as I got one shot, I want I want somebody to make it uh, because yeah, LeBron has the IQ. He will he is willing to make that pass. He's willing to pass to Cruz. So he's willing to pass to Danny Green. He's willing to make the play for AD. Right. I think that's part of empowerment as well. But uh, my my top five, I think we can both agree on Damian Lillard being like that number one guy. Yeah. Uh, I, but I, Kyrie Irving, I love, I love him in a clutch. I mean, that's probably one of his greatest assets, closing out games. Uh, Kevin Durant plays on the same team. Yeah. I, I, I would, I trust giving him the basketball at the end of game. Uh, Jimmy, who had some struggles uh, in his early career as far as game winners and, and finishing out, I think he's taking a step up. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I really didn't think about a top five going in, but uh, I. Yeah. I'm just throwing it at you right now. It comes to mind. Uh, do, did you have a, cl a clear cut five? As I'm trying to, you know, fill well, up. I, I would argue that I'd rather have Devin Booker or Luka Doncic take a last second shot than LeBron James. That would be my argument. I'd rather have both those dudes taking the last second shot over LeBron. Right. I think I think that's one thing that's plagued Luka. I think Luka has not been clutch. I don't know. I know he's got like maybe a game winner under his belt, but. Uh, I've even seen their record this year. I wish I had those numbers in front of me, but them in close games, like five point games, I think they're they're like three and eight. Like like I said, I don't have the number in front of me, but I know that they've had issues closing out the game. And yeah, you can focus on Luca. And I definitely don't trust Luca at the end of game over LeBron. I do. I'll take Luca all day in that scenario. I, and, and I'll take uh, uh, Booker's teammate and Chris Paul over over him. I think he's. I think at, he him last year. I think he was the clutches like percentage guy most points in close games has to do with the fact they were in a bunch of close games but um chris paul is somebody that i think about and i probably put in my my top five as far as clutches especially when we're talking about like the regular season thing yeah all right well i mean that's fair i just i i'm not a big lebron as a clutch guy i know he makes the right situation but i do agree with Kyrie. i think he's right i would rather have kevin durant on my team making a shot I don't trust necessarily where LeBron's at because, like you said, LeBron defers, and he did defer to Kyrie, and Kyrie probably feels like, well, I would like to defer too, and, you know, he didn't get that back for him. So I understand kind of where that beef is coming from. I get that part. And I, I and just to go back and so where I think where this beef stems and where people are, like, making articles and talking about the fact that they didn't dap up or they didn't they – didn't yeah. at the beginning of the game, it does stem back from those comments. Like, he was on Kevin Durant's podcast – the comments came out during the NBA Finals, and that and that's just such a, a stat that Katie's the first teammate that he feels that he can trust to close out big games. And it was more it was more than that. Like it, it, he dived in a little bit uh, a little bit later, and so yeah, it stinks. He said, yeah. like LeBron admittedly said, "Damn, all caps, damn." Like yeah. I, I kind of watched that uh, road trip in interview where he's yeah definitely talk to him about it. And yeah, he's like, yeah. That, I mean, that is a big blow. It, it, it hurt my pride. So, um, so whose side are you on? I guess I, I, I think I got a feel, but who whose side are you on with this beef? I, I, well, you can't just you, you can't like say, oh, it's just Kyrie because Kyrie has been a he's been an interesting character the last few years. So I think that I, I I'll say I'm on Kyrie's side in terms of like LeBron comes across very innocent sometimes. Like, I don't know why he wouldn't like me. And I think that there's a lot of other stuff there. Uh, I think Kyrie definitely has some deep seated stuff, but I like your brother comment. I think it is kind of like a big brother, little brother kind of spat. I don't think it necessarily is like, I don't like that person, but if I had to agree with somebody, I'm agreeing with Kyrie. Cause I think that just his comments are true. They may hurt LeBron's feelings, but I think they're true. Yeah, when we've been back and forth on that, and we can maybe have a, a clutch is LeBron clutch? Uh, hey, anytime 
or conspiracy because and i know that uh shannon points this out that skip bayless has created this mindset and that everyone just thinks that that this is true i think what is true is that he is not great at the line he's 73 percent, and that is to me if you're going to point out one one of the you know top two three things that i guess weaknesses in lebron james that's just that's not good enough and yeah. um and, and free throw shooting is vital it's it's very important i mean we look at, at Giannis right now and how that kind of affects our opinion on it, you know some people were saying he's the best player in the league but like it, there's clearly holes there i think i think if you're going to look at somebody that's not clutch look at look at Giannis and look at his inability to figure it out um deep in games and and we've seen that in the playoffs and more particularly where they would have leads going into the fourth quarter and whether it was Miami this past year or uh, whether it was um, Toronto the year before, mm -hmm. uh, they were up 2-0 and in those last four games where I guess the uh, gentleman sweep, they, he was not clutch there either. And I wasn't, I'm not trying to defer the whole LeBron thing to, to Giannis, <laughs> but it just, it kind of made me think about that. And LeBron, I mean, and Kyrie, he, he's right to, to, to throw a little jag, you know, you're the best free throw shooter. But I, I definitely think it stems from, Hey, I was the superstar on Cleveland and yeah. I was getting all the shine. Um, and I, I, I liked being the, the, the guy. I liked being a guy. And LeBron goes in there. And even though that they, they're winning, they're now title contender. Um, and maybe he doesn't appreciate exactly what that meant at the moment. There was always an underlining, you know, you're coming in and taking my team. Yeah. And, and and I do agree with the with the whole uh, yes, LeBron is a little passive aggressive with that nature. But when you're the best player in the league, there's going to be a lot of you know, you know, back and forth feelings as far as that concern. And and so I feel like he he walks a, f a fine line in between that. And then when it is really super uncomfortable, he'd rather just ignore it and yeah. just stay focused on his own team. And speaking of focus on their on their own teams, and I think that has a lot to do with like kind of why they're not all all lovey dovey right now. Who who do you think has a better chance of winning the finals bef between the Lakers in the Nets? Yeah, you know, it's funny because after that game, everybody's talking about it, but we can't really take last game into account. Maybe without Davis and Schroeder, I don't know how you can really account for that production that you're missing. But man, you know, I was hard on this, and it's funny because the when you're looking at basically all of the all of the lines, uh, the Nets are now a five to one favorite, so they're actually jumping ahead of everybody. Dan, they're good, man, and I, I you know they can score every time they come down. I will say their biggest thing is they can't defend. Now, I just don't know if they don't want to defend right now because they can turn it on. Because KD, we've seen it turn it on. So if they get in the playoffs, I'm like, okay, we're going to defend. But, you know, they they can score. Harden, Kyrie, Kevin Durant, all those guys can score. I even love our guy Joe Harris. I think Harris is uh, – he's that sneaky guy at the park that you don't know is really good, and then he just comes out there and just shoots threes and just get, makes layups. That's all he does. Just boom. You're like, who is this guy wearing pants out here just killing us? Uh, I feel like that's yeah. me of like the, the, the – like – the little videos of the clips, like these are five different basketball players you don't want to see at the park. <laughs> yeah. The white guy that doesn't miss ever. Yeah, yeah, wearing yeah. pretty cut-off jeans, and you're like, wait, what is this guy doing out here? And he's just killing it. You know, right now, I, I tend to I tend to go with the Nets, barely. I think that the Lakers still are going to be up there. I think the Nets have the easier path, so I think they have to get into the finals a little easier because I don't think the East is as strong as people think it is because I think the Nets are just going to – I think they just outscore everybody. As far as that matchup, it's going to be a great matchup. I think buyouts are going to matter who they grab. I saw uh, I saw DeMar DeMarcus Cousins maybe coming to the Lakers now. He might be bought out by Houston. That would be interesting because they play they really play Davis at the four, and then they're going to the Nets are going to play probably Katie at the four. And if they bring somebody in there, if Jordan comes back, which I don't know, if Jordan makes them better. Um, but I, I think I lead with the Nets just because of their scoring ability and because of those three guys. I think that's where it's at. And I, I'm sorry, I have to backtrack a little bit, but uh, I mean, I'm, you'll see. I, 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 I slightly agree with you there. Uh, but I think a little bit of the of LeBron being a little in his feelings a little bit is the fact that Kyrie's got a new big bro, yeah. in Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant's probably the second greatest basketball player in this league, or at least that's my opinion. And I, I think he's really the, the the person in this league that has the threat of taking the throne. And so I think that. You know, the comments came with KD and the fact that it's about KD yeah. and that in the back of LeBron's head is like, this is this is one guy that can bump with me. Like he 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 hit the two clutch uh, jumpers. I know it was for the for the Warriors, but he was the one 
who had the heroic moments in those finals. And I think that has a little bit to do with why he's in his feelings. Now to answer the, the finals question, um, I no AD, give me the Nets, right? If they, if AD can't come back and you know, he has injury history then yeah. um, LeBron's had some bad luck as far as his teammates, whether it's Kyrie or Kevin or anybody else that have uh, kind of fallen out, you know, no KD. Yes. Give me, give me the Nets all day with AD and LeBron. Like a, a healthy AD, I'll, I'll take them because yeah. of the defensive p- potential to get stops when it matters. Um, but no, yeah, I have I have nightmares at night of KD with his hezzy hang pole three to seal another game in the finals. Um, as a LeBron fan, that that would hurt hurt my soul, right? Yeah. And I and I and I fear that, and I fear uh, Kyrie and, and and KD and James, and I think it I think it's between them and in Philly, and if Philly can. Um, dominate with Embiid if they can get, you know, defensive stops. I think Ben Simmons is probably the best person that can cover KD because it feels like Ben even grew a little bit. Like he's like yeah. seven, seven foot right now. Um, so we'll we'll see um, injuries. And then I, I'd have to agree with you that I think the buyout market is is huge. Like where, where will Drummond go? If he goes to the Nets, like, okay. If, if he goes to the Lakers, you know, he there's a chance. You don't know what these text messages are doing, but I know that LeBron is right here. I know Anthony yeah. Davis, especially being out, they're campaigning to get guys, whether it's Cousins, whether it's if you get, you know, maybe get a lucky, healthy Blake Griffin. I don't know if that that's the seal, but who knows? He he would he would fit in with the Lakers. So who do you got within the finals? Man, uh, I'm scared as hell of the Nets, and uh, I'll just hope for, for the best health. But it's going to be a great, great witness finals to witness yeah. where we we all kind of knew that the Lakers were going to take down Miami. Uh, uh, we all were rooting for them. It was a great story. Um, but, J- you know, Jimmy can only give you 40, 10 and 10, one, one of those games. Yeah. So, um, so with that said, you know, we would love to hear what you guys have to say. If you would like our video, uh, leave some comments. Uh, but, you know, I hope you liked our first uh, coach's corner session of triple play fantasy basketball.